Howdy everybody, welcome to the second annual Motorhome Monday. Zach again, uh, excited to show you the Encore, uh, Coachman Encore, the 325 SS. Uh, brand new, uh, brand new brand, brand new floor plan. Uh, really unique feature on the inside that I'm betting uh, none of you guys have seen before unless you've seen this already. Um, I'll take you through some of the differences. Again, we're staying on brand uh, with the Coachman product. Um, this is gonna be their top of the line gas coach. As you can see, if you kind of look down the side here, this is full body paint. Uh, there is no decals whatsoever. It's an automotive style paint that's on this uh, that never fully hardens. It stays soft enough to be able to flex going down the road without dry cracking. Uh, so this is going to stay looking the way that it does for a very long time. Um, as we head over, we start off in the corner here, uh, you have what's called diamond shield. Um, I, it's hard to see the actual diamond shield. It's a little easier to see the, the tag for it. What that is, is it's an extra clear coat layer that covers the front end of the coach, the, the part that's going to be taking, you know, the, the brunt, the brunt of whether it's rocks, uh, bugs, whatever you can think of. That diamond shield is going to protect this paint in the front. Um, Got to have it when you have full body paint. Uh, 22 and a half inch tires it's going to drastically affect the ride so you move up from 19 and a half uh, to this when you're at this level you're at 22 and a half all the way around to so be much smoother quieter uh, drive because of that uh, you can see down here side view cameras they even paint the enclosure to match uh, both sides will have the side view cameras as well as the rear view camera um, in the back that function as you're driving down the road uh, if you take a step back one really important thing to notice is there's two awnings on this on this uh, coach and no slide rooms on this side. And the reason that there's two awnings, one's 10 feet, one's 15 feet, gives you, you know, obviously 25 feet of total awning coverage, is because they wanted to make sure your entry door and your outside kitchen were both underneath the awning in case it's raining out, uh, you know, in case of bad weather, you have full coverage there. You can still use everything while being underneath a awning. Which is a, it's a great design to have. Frameless windows. Again, you'll notice that there isn't, uh, that they're not framed. Uh, and again, that seals in the seal. The seal's not exposed. They're also hinged at the top. So these windows, when they open up, uh, they open up from the bottom out. That way, again, if it's raining out, if it's drizzling out, you can leave them open, still be getting airflow into the coach um, without getting water in. Outside entertainment. <clears throat> you can see you also have a built-in radio here and there, built into the awning, uh, controlled from the inside. Takes away the need to you know punch those two two more holes, two more speakers in the outside. Instead, they put them right into uh, the awning. <laughs> Slam latch hinges. Again, no metal hinges you have to turn uh, fiddle around with very easy to open and close and they're gonna last if you take a peek through here you'll notice a huge pass-through storage um, right now what's stored in here is the ladder the bunk ladder for the inside um, it's a great place to put that uh, also a great place to put things like lawn chairs you know skis golf clubs a, a lot of different things will fit in that pass-through storage uh, just give you a ton, ton of extra space after that. Down. Propane tank, um, it's a huge tank. You can see this is something you're not going to have to be, you know, filling up very often. Uh, I believe it is. It's over 20 gallons, so you'll be, you'll be getting through the camping season, you know, no, no problem. Uh, with that. Outside outlets, again for underneath uh, the awnings, plugging things in outside. Extra storage. Good height on all of these as well. Um, they're not very skinny, uh, easy to, to fit stuff in. And again, these slam latch doors, easy to close and they're going to stay closed. Uh, this is solar prepped. What that means is that's a plug and play system. Uh, you do not um, you know, need to mess around with installing the wiring. All you need to do is get your standalone panel 
set it up once you get to where you're going, plug it into there and it'll act as a trickle charge to keep up with things like the lights, uh, your fridge, depending on the size of panel you get. That's what that is. Moving on along. Outside kitchen, you have a few things uh, to note. One, a sink that does go right into your gray tank, so it's not one you have to pull out and dump. Um, with its own pump switch. When you have water in there, you flip the switch and it pumps it out uh, of the sink. You've got storage space as well as your outside mini fridge. This is electric only, um, so this isn't working going down the road, but once you get to where you're going and you plug in the power, that automatically turns on, um, as well as a propane quick connect. So if you have a, a portable grill along with you, you set it up here, plug into that, uh, and you are all ready to go. So very nice class A that's only a 32 footer having an outside kitchen and outside entertainment um, space isn't too common. Uh, so you really did a great job on the outside fitting in a lot of features. Another pass through storage space to go along with the other. Uh, you can fit this, this goes up, it's a, it's a tall compartment. You can fit a lot of uh, taller objects in here, but again, having all of that pass through storage, you can fit a lot of stuff on the outside storage compartments. Moving around to the back. You can see it from standard with a ladder, the backup camera, a nice window there too. It really lets a lot of light into the bedroom. Uh, and it's an 8,000 pound hitch on this one. Uh, still a 500 pound tongue weight. Um, and your seven-way control, so it is all set up, all ready uh, to tow. If you're going to be towing a vehicle behind you, it's all set up for that. Uh, fiberglass uh, roof as well, so no TPO, no rubber on this. So it's nothing that you're re repainting or resealing. Um, the only thing you're checking uh, for seals is around the air conditioners, around the, the vents up top that have the caulk around them. Other than that, it's a fiberglass roof, so uh, very little maintenance with that. Around. Power center, so this is where your 50 amp uh, power cord is stored. 50 amp, this has two air conditioners, so you're going to need that. You're running both at the same time, and again, this passes through that other compartment we were just looking at. This is the other side of the pass through storage, um, as well as your automatic transfer box that again is going to take the gen power and automatically uh, have it have this coach running off the generator without the need to do anything with your power cord. And that's funny. And check this one out. Not only does it pass through, but it goes deeper left and right. Fitting things like fishing poles, again golf clubs. Bigger items that sometimes you can have issues finding where to put them, and they'll fit no problem. You have your wet bay, so this is where all of your water hookups, your water filter, outside shower, um, everything's going to be in here. I'll kind of talk about some of the specifics. Your water pump is right here. Um, it is not, you know, hidden into a compartment. You got to take things apart to get to. Uh, for winterizing, it's easily accessible. Um, you have. Your low point drains right here for your hot and cold water lines. City water connection where you're plugging in your hose at the campground and then your fresh tank fill where you're filling up your fresh water tank. Uh, if you're going dry camping, which then you'd need that pump to pump from the fresh water tank. Uh, and it'll go to all your sinks, your outside shower, your toilet, and all of those things. Um, as another feature, this has the black tank flush. Uh, you do not need to put a hose you know, through your uh, through your window down your toilet to rinse out your black tank. Uh, you can just hook your hose right up to the sewer flush. It'll go right to that tank, uh, rinse it out, clean it, and you'll be good to go. Um, you can see here is your water filter. It's winterized right now. Currently, there is a filter inside for it um, that we would install. And again, that filters all the water going into your coach. You also have cable in at the campground. If they offer cable hooks up to here, goes to the outside TV, the TV's on the inside as well, um, and your dump. So for your black and gray, this cap comes off, you just get a 90 degree adapter to go right through here, you hook your hose up from the bottom, and that way you can be hooked up with the uh, uh, compartment door closed, does not need to be open, 
And down below here, generator exhaust and the uh, regular exhaust. Here, hot water tank, propane electric, runs off of either. Just flipping a switch from the inside, really not much you have to do uh, besides cleaning that out uh, with some compressed air uh, once a year or so, making sure that it doesn't get uh, any dirt or dust built up in there. generator Cummins Onan uh, 5500 it's a, it's a gas generator runs off the same fuel uh, supply as the engine does so you will just have one fill up don't need to fill up the multiple spots uh, as a safety feature I and mean, we just ran into this ourselves once you get below a quarter tank generator will no longer run uh, reason being if you're you know uh, dry camping somewhere a, a long ways from anybody else uh, and your generator is running and you're below a quarter tank it won't let you run run the tank empty uh, and, and use up all your gas other side again of the passenger storage the ladders in storage compartments access to some hydraulics uh, for the leveling system um, so again not much to there hopefully you wouldn't be ever need to get in there uh, side view camera on the other side and at this point I think we're ready to go to the inside power steps that come out low. Uh, it's not a big first step. It's easy to get into. Um, power. First things first, I'm going to open up the slide room, give us some space. But before I do that, why don't you go down the lane here so you can see even with the slide room closed on this layout, this is how it would look traveling down the road. You still get a good amount of space to move through the coach to get to the kitchen, uh, the bathroom, and even get uh, all the way back to the bedroom if need be. Start up at the front and work our way back. You can see I have the pedestal table uh, set up here. Uh, what that's for is both of these chairs do swivel uh, to face. It gives you an extra table, uh, two more uh, comfortable seats if you have uh, company over. Um, there's a whole bunch to go over up at, up at the front here. Uh, I will cover that when we're going on the test drive here in a little while. Um, if you look to the back, the layout is theater seats and a dinette. Uh, this is the, the dream dinette, or what I mean by that is there's no posts underneath it. There is outlets back there, but what it is, it's a gas strut in the back that holds this up. Um, and, it, and all you do is flip the switch down and press, and that's how you raise and lower. It's very easy to do to turn it into a bed um, and then lock it in place. You also have storage that's easily accessible under both benches without having to remove the cushions and take a, a piece of wood off to get to it and everything on this is the easy close um, they'll close themselves the last inch inch and a half uh, it's a nice feature as well as it keeps the, the the drawers closed while you're driving down the road they're not going to open up on you once you have stuff in them moving on down you have theater seating across from the television fireplace uh, these are power heated massage um, and again, it's as easy as pressing a button because they're power. You don't have to fiddle around with you know, pulling on a lever and working the thing back. You just hit a button. It reclines as far as you want it to. Uh, same when you're bringing it back. And it does have uh, heat as well as massage. So uh, very comfortable uh, and nice features. You can see total blockout shades for all the windows. 
So none, none of the accordion style that still, you know, kind of let a lot of light through. Um, true roller shades uh, that block out. You get a bunch of storage here. These are all connected uh, across the top in a tall slide room. About 5'10", but I'm not going to have to worry about when I'm sitting down or getting up hitting my head on the edge of the slide room. Uh, nice height to that. Over in the kitchen area, solid surface, countertops, uh, a really deep stainless sink, the residential style faucet. So you have no issues getting the you know real pots and pans, things you'd actually uh, want to cook with that are larger. You can still uh, get to clean. You can see they send you some backup paint. Uh, this is all the paint that was used to paint the outside of the coach. If you ever did have a, a chip, a scrape, a scratch on the outside, you have everything you need here to uh, fix it up, make it look back to new. As well as a bunch of remotes. There's probably five of them in here for all the TVs and radios that you get with this. And again, if you notice, when I close it, it closes itself the last inch, which is a, a very nice feature. The outlets pull up. Two outlets, two USBs, you don't have to hang cords up at the top here. Uh, another new feature too is you get this big window, uh, it really lets in a lot of light um, and a real backsplash all the way around. Glass stove top cover, you get a three burner cooktop in the standard oven. Uh, it's nice too that you get a residential size fridge and an oven, they don't just give you one or the other. Um, you still get both in this, as well as some more storage. Moving on along uh, to the residential fridge. This is all electric, but you can see it gives you tons and tons of cubic foot of space in your fridge freezer. This has an ice maker to it. Um, this unit is hooked up with an inverter, so running down the road, you'll have no problem. Uh, this coach will run off of just, the, the, the fridge will run off just the batteries of it. You don't have to worry about propane uh, or anything like that. Um, and as a safety feature, if you're dry camping and this is running off just your batteries, this coach has something called auto gen start. So if you're draining those batteries too low, uh, the generator actually fires up, charges the batteries, and then shuts itself off to make sure that your fridge isn't ever uh, draining the, the batteries too low. So that's a, a very uh, nice feature to have, something you kind of need when you're talking about a residential fridge. Move along, fireplace. This will put out a, a lot of heat. Uh, it'll, it'll take the chill out of the air. It's also nice to look at. On top of having the electric fireplace, there is two electric heat pumps in both the air conditioners. They both have one. Um, so when you when you think about all of that, this this really you don't need to use your propane uh, for your furnace so much. You know, at the campground when you're plugged in, you can have the heat pumps running, the fireplace running, just off of electric, and keep the keep the coach warm uh, without any issue. Uh, that's a very nice feature. Both the air conditioners are into the same ductwork as well. So you see, one's here, one's in the bedroom, um, and fully ducted throughout. So. The bathroom, bedroom, living room area all gets uh, air conditioning as well as as well as heat. Moving on, tons of storage space here. This can be a whole lot of different things. It could be a pantry, um, more closet space. Next, you have your washer and dryer, stackable washer and dryer. It's a standard with this coach. Here's a great design that they did, and I don't know if it'll be easy to tell over video, but when I open this door up, it pivots in the middle. Can you catch that? What this allows uh, the, the, you to do is when the slides close, you can still open this door without it hitting the cabinet across from it. Um, if you want to take a peek in here, you have a glass door shower. Porcelain toilet, and a stainless sink. All right, so this is the part that I've been very excited. I've been moving fast through the coach just to get to show you this. 
this design, it's a king size bed first of all, and it's a standard layout. You still get all the storage, you get the TV across from it, uh, window here, lots of countertop space and uh, cabinet space as well. Um, but when you're not using this, say you're getting ready to, to go out, getting dressed, and you're not, uh, you know, you're not sleeping, this picks right up. Come around here and check this out. You get two benches that you can sit on, storage underneath. Um, finally, you know, an area where there's a pocket door that closes this off, and this whole thing can be to, to, to get ready, extra storage. Uh, just really opens up the space a ton. Uh, I think it's an awesome, really an awesome design. Uh, it's the first time I had seen it. Uh, it was a few months ago uh, when, when they uh, de de debuted the coach with us, and I was you know very impressed. And this has got a lot of positive feedback. So bed picks up. You get the mirror there, two benches, um, and again just all the extra storage because of that. And then you just hold here, hold down. Another nice feature is even with the slide in, you do not have to flip the bed up. It stays down in this position while traveling if you want it to um, so you can still use it you don't have to flip it up like that to you know when you're getting ready to drive the coach if you look across here two nightstands you have outlets one down here one on the other side um, and it's easy to get to the corner of the bed a lot of times when you're talking about a king bed you know manufacturers will forget to give you space to make it you know to walk around the bed um, this one you still can easily get to the edges of it when, when you're talking about making the bed um, and again hanger space on both sides lots of cabinet space overhead this is the CPAP station uh, you do have hookups for that and then places for the hose to run right through swing along again you see your emergency exit window it is nice to have a window on the rear wall it lets a ton of light in really opens up the space back here um, opens up the room a lot Leave. Yep. There it is. extra storage behind the TV a place you could hook up a, a receiver satellite box um, to you know have that back here if you want but again just more storage countertop space and tons more here and these are all the easy close, all the easy close drawers. I think we're about ready to do the test drive. First thing I always do when I'm getting ready to drive a coach is make sure all of the cabinets, all the drawers, all the doors are closed. Uh, if you forget to do that, and you're driving down the road and, you, and you're making a turn or two, you know you'll uh, you'll hear it and be reminded. So first things first, just making sure everything's closed up. Bob, I'm gonna go grab a license plate. I'm gonna maybe do some more uh, kind of around shots, show everybody just how beautiful this coach is with the full body paint all the real wood and, and, and the new design of it. Be right back. Great. That's the control panel that Zach was talking about. A lot of depth, open space, very comfortable. Take another little walk around the outside. I don't know if you can see that there's LED lights underneath the awning. It's a feature I'm fond of. Really love this color scheme too.
Zach's pulling the slide in now. Ready for a little ride? All right. Oop. If anybody has any questions at any point, uh, please feel free to type that into the comment section. Be more than happy to, to answer questions. I've been here a while, so you know, hopefully, I should be able to help you out with any questions you might have. Uh, before we get going, I just kind of want to do a quick overview of, of all of the uh, tools and everything you have up front. First, you can see here your radio is separate from your backup and side view cameras. What I mean by that is this is an all one screen, um, so you can you know easily adjust, flip through your radio while still being able to see behind you uh, going down the road. As soon as you flip your blinker on, that's when you're going to get the side view camera going. Um, and, and it's very nice and, and useful when you're making a turn to be able to see exactly how far away you are from the curb, uh, from the line you're trying to stay in. And it's, and it's instant. As soon as I hit that blinker on one way or the other, uh, it's clicking right over. Uh, you have here a radio control switch. <clears throat> Pretty much how you're gonna be turning your radio on and off. You can see I flipped it, the radio's turning on. Uh, hood lights, fog lights, generator start and stop. You also have a generator start and stop uh, by the slide controls in the center of the coach, as well as your auxiliary start. Uh, auxiliary start being there's two batteries underneath the steps for, for the coach, for the RV, and then there's a battery as well underneath the hood for the engine. Um, if you were ever to kill your uh, engine battery, you left the headlights on overnight and you got nothing when you went to turn this key, by holding down auxiliary start, you can almost self jump uh, you know, use the house batteries to fire up your engine, uh, and that way you're not uh, stuck stranded. Um, over here, I know it's hard to see, but you do have power heated mirrors, as well as lights here, uh, <coughs> sun, you have the visor here that's going to completely block out, as well as the day shade. And I will say it's extremely useful from experience. You can see it's a nice panoramic view. Um, it's awesome when you're driving cross country, everything you can see in one of these. Um, but if the sun's hitting you at a certain point, it's nice to be able to press a button and get some shade for when you're driving down the road. There's a question about, is this a gas or a diesel coach? This is a gas coach. It's a gas coach. A lot of diesel features, so I can understand that question. Uh, it's a Ford uh, V10 is what powers this. The F53 chassis uh, is a 22,000 pound chassis, so uh, that is one of the uh, on, on the heavier side, which is going to allow you to carry and, and store a lot when you're going down the road. Um, uh, and uh, on top of that, it's it's a it's a you know heavier shocks, heavier springs. Um, and it's really going to support the weight of the solid surface countertop, solid wood, the fiberglass roof, all of the, you know, all of the nicer features way more. So you need that heavier chassis to support them. Uh, but that's what this is sitting on. Okay. Um, other than that, auto leveling, it's a key feature over here. In fact, if you want to pass this over, I'll give you a close up shot of it. Um, very easy to use. Uh, this is hooked up to the, the, the chassis battery, the engine battery. So as a rule of thumb, you just fire up the engine before you're using this to making sure that your, your uh, leveling system's getting power. All you do is you hit on, auto, and that'll bring all four jacks down, pick the coach up, level it. Once it is level, this LCI in the middle blinks green uh, and you are good to go at that point. It takes all the wobble out. It's a lot easier than pulling up onto blocks of wood, that's for sure. And then when you're done, you're ready to hit the road, you hit auto retract all jacks. Um, that is going to bring them all back to the travel position. And again, it'll blink uh, once it's uh, all set to do that. Pass it back over. Okay, so 
release the e-brake and we are ready to go. Again, one of the key differences in the drive too, again this is 22 and a half inch wheels versus last week were 19 and a half. Uh, the bigger wheels will give you a much smoother experience going down the road. Yeah, spring is coming. It's coming. Can't be soon enough. You know it. One of the things I hear very often from my customers that are debating between a Class A and Class C, different motorhomes, uh, is they really love this view. You know, this is really a panoramic, it's like a, a, a theater view, so half the part of owning an RV is, is getting to where you're going and enjoying that experience and being able to go through the mountains or you know depending on obviously where you're traveling to but being able to really take everything in and see everything um, it, it really is you know it's something that that people enjoy. So Zach we often get questions from customers about the type of license that's required to drive one of these. Yep. It's a great question so you do not need any special type, uh, any any special type of license whatsoever to drive any any gas coach. Uh, regular license, you're good to go. What it where, where it gets when you get into a, a heavier motorhome, which is a diesel motorhome of 26,000 pounds or heavier, you, you do need in New York what's called an R endorsement, uh, which is a recreational uh, uh, vehicle endorsement that you get on the back of your license. Uh, it's like taking a, you know, it's like taking your your, your uh, license uh, test. You just you, the coach you're picking up, you take to the DMV, you drive it around for 10, 15 minutes, uh, and then you, you get your your R endorsement on the back of your license. But again, that's only for 26,000 pounds or heavier. Um, so if you're looking at a gas coach, you do not have to worry about any any type of special license. So there's a question about the size of the fuel tank. How many gallons? Uh, I, I believe it is 70 gallons on this coach. 70 gallons. So how long have you worked for the company, Zach? I've been with Bolton RV about five and a half years now. Um, and my background is I started off in detail cleaning them <laughs> as, uh, as a college student just looking for something to do and, and get a job and from there progressed to uh, the lot so I was driving them around for about a year and then I did parts uh, where I was shipping and receiving parts ordering parts for, for all the different uh, campers uh, then I was an orientation specialist where I learned how to kind of show everybody how things work on their day of delivery and from there I went into sales so you know, I've got a been through most of the jobs they offer here, I guess, at this point. It's been a, it's been a great, great experience. It's family-owned and operated uh, business. Uh, it treats your people right. They really care about their customers. The, the Coltons do, and uh, service is, is a big, big deal. It's something that we, you know, as a company, have, have really taken seriously. Uh, you know, Coltons invested a lot of money opening up the new service center, uh, Blaisdell on Lake Avenue. You know, it's almost the size of the North Tonawanda dealership, and it's service only. Um, so if you do have something uh, that needs an addressing from our service department, you know, uh, please reach out. You know, we'll be able to get you get you taken care of. Uh, again, service is an essential uh, is essential. So we are still fully up and running there. Uh, so it would be no problem getting you taken care of. So what would be the basic service? Um, care that uh, the owner of this motorhome would want to take on themselves? Yeah, great question. A lot of maintenance in the RV world is preventative maintenance and it's making sure that uh, you know, things are caught before they get bad or before they happen. Uh, visual inspection I'd say is always important. Uh, once, once or twice a year 
you know, I'd say checking the roof, making sure the seals that I talked about around the air conditioners, around the vents are covered, um, you know, are, are solid. There's no openings or places for water to get in. Um, you're going to do standard oil changes, just like you would on your truck, as well as every 150 hours, uh, you're changing the generator oil, filters, um, keeping it charged. I will say probably 90% of issues that, that people have with RVs is 12 volts and 12 volt power issues, right? So dead batteries, things like that. Uh, so just making sure that you're disconnecting your battery, keeping all the lights off when you're not using it. Uh, if it is stored for, uh, for months and months in a row, say in the winter time, maybe getting out to the coach once once a month to run things, run run the generator, fire up the engine, let, let things uh, run and charge. Uh, uh, yeah, other than that, you know, it's, it is a house on wheels at the end of the day, so uh, just keeping your eye out. If something does happen, you know, get the, getting it taken care of before it leads to more issues. You can say this is a very smooth, quiet, comfortable, comfortable drive. Here's one thing that a lot of a lot of people won't think of when you see something like this. You know, a lot of first timers' initial reaction is, "Oh, I don't know if I can drive that," or it looks like it would be very difficult to drive. Um, it is, you know, longer than, than most vehicles, right? A little bit wider, but once you get used to it, especially because the turning radius on this is actually very sharp. <clears throat> the wheels, front the front wheels are directly underneath you, and they have a tight. Uh, a cut, something like 52 degrees, I believe it is, a wheel cut, where you can really swing the front end of this coach around and maneuver in, in spaces uh, without any issue, versus when you're thinking about a Class C, a smaller coach, when the wheels are way out in front of you, you actually have a wider turning radius than you would on something like this. It's really nice to be able to see what's going on behind you. Absolutely. Absolutely, it's, it's a great feature, uh, especially you know if, if you are towing something, or even if you're not towing something, but you have bike a bike rack in the back, a storage rack. Um, yes, being able to see while you're going straight down the road, as well as when you get to where you're going and you're backing up to, to a to a camp spot or a site, you're storing it, being able to see directly below and, and behind you makes it a lot easier. We'll say as well, if you're interested in this coach, or even if you're not so much, and, and you're looking for something else, bigger, smaller, different, uh, we have a lot of inventory, a lot of different motorhomes at, at both of our locations, so you know, feel free to reach out uh, and, and, and ask. And I'd be surprised if we didn't have something that was very, very close to what you're looking for. So if someone was interested in this motorhome and wanted to test drive it today or tomorrow, how would that get arranged? Sure. So you can either call, text, or email in to us at, at the dealership. We would set up a time with you uh, when you can make it in and depending on what location. Um, and then go from there. So we are by appointment right now, but, uh, but that would be, no, be no issue. Uh, we'd go through all the proper um, processes as far as making sure everything is clean beforehand, uh, sanitized, sanitized after the fact as well. Uh, you know, uh, we have all the, the masks, gloves, all the supplies on hand, so, so we're following all the safety protocol. Uh, we can meet you, and like I said, be behind the wheel and you can see just how you know comfortable and easy this is. And fun, might I add. Any other questions on anything? None at the moment. All right. Well, in that case, uh, if you enjoyed the video, if you could leave it a like, share it, um, be greatly appreciated. And you can always comment below if you rewatch it and have questions later. I'll be sure, uh, or someone else will be sure to get on and uh, answer any questions you might have. And uh, 
Thank you for tuning in. Thank you.